It's my pleasure to be here. I am privileged to be a part of this panel moderating this session about cloud security. The title is very apt, Buzzing Bees to Tackle Big Elephants in the Room. Uh, though public cloud and private cloud are the buzzwords of the day, uh, security is actually becoming a big barrier for adoption of enterprises. Uh, so my objective for this uh, panel discussion and what I want to tap into the collective intelligence of the esteemed panel is uh, to, to really address uh, some of the concerns that typical enterprises and CIOs have around uh, cloud adoption. So I want to keep this simple. I want to represent the customers of the cloud and the CIOs sitting in this uh, hall. Uh, so let me get started with the very first question. First things first, from a security standpoint, uh, do you think the cloud is ready for the enterprise and of business applications and, and, and specific enterprise workloads? Let me elaborate a little bit of uh, a uh, little bit more on this specific thing. Uh, my understanding has been that though public cloud has been around for a couple of years, uh, we are yet to see great case studies published by public cloud providers. We are yet to see uh, a marquee win that is showcased by public cloud providers in India and even across the world. Public cloud happens to be typically embraced by startups, dot coms, and very early stage enterprises. So is the public cloud really ready for the enterprises? Can you run line of business applications that you typically run on premise in-house? Can you move it to the public cloud? Is it ready for enterprise? Mr. Om, uh, let's get started with you. The maturity coming in into the Indian market has fairly started off. I believe the adoption is increasing. Uh, we see a lot of uh, buzz happening on our managed backup services, manage security services over the cloud. Uh, slowly, slowly adoption is happening. Uh, it's, it is a process where you understand that what is your core business, uh, core business for an enterprise and what he can outsource and what is the benefits. And secondly, there are security concerns. So the key thing is that, you know, what is the maturity coming in uh, in terms of applications which are being hosted around? Uh, Salesforce has been the, one of the key cloud uh, initiators which has been there. And I believe uh, BlackBerry and Apple are being successful because of the cloud architecture that they are working on. Although regulatory concerns would come in, it would get solved. And there is a roadmap for adoption. Uh, I believe like a lot of business users could add in what could be the more key concerns. But yes, security is a concern in terms of how to address regulatory requirements, what are the rights to audit, how audit is taken care of, and other subject matter. So, so is security the only barrier to adoption, Mr. Pimlain? Yeah, I'm trying to break this uh, problem into two parts. You talk of security, and then you talk of safety. Right. I, I, I separate the two. Security, by and large, at least within the you know, audience present over here or somebody like myself, Security has become uh, mainly in the technical domain now. And uh, so I'll keep that aside for the time being. I think cloud service providers are as capable as any other data center in charge of taking care of technical security. And probably better, probably worse, but they're pretty much there. But the business safety which comes, which is, you know, what are the kind of contracts you're signing, what are your rights in case of any violation of your guidelines, how do you protect your data, what kind of beta backups are available, what kind of disaster recovery processes are in place. These all relate to safety. And I don't think I have yet seen a contract which would even vaguely satisfy uh, any one of us. In terms of, would I sign up for something like this? No, I won't. So that's where the real problem is. Security, as technical security, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, antivirus, you know, various... Uh, SAS 70, what have you. All those things are in place. That's not the problem. The problem is things like this, hardcore business issues. So, so my understanding is it's just not security, but the readiness of the cloud provider and the confidence that they give you to really move your workloads. Well, I need to see a contract which is actually signable, and I've yet to see one. Very true, very true. And Mr. Srinivasan? Okay, uh, the way I would uh, look at it is security on uh, the cloud. Uh, and that's been uh, my, uh, you know, suggestion to all the, you know, consumers of cloud services, uh, let it be uh, a SaaS offering, 
or let it be an infrastructure as a service offering, uh, is, is primarily no different from what you would do for your own data centers and what you would do for your enterprise. Just because it's hosted in the cloud, you've got to be that much more careful. And it isn't one contract or one, one size fits every, every month, so the service provider will have to work closely with the end customer. The end customer will have to work closely because this is an evolution of a service in a new market. Right. Uh, as you rightly put, there aren't any uh, large deals out there you know, which have happened, so there's no history. There's no precedent to follow. Right? So it's, it, 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 it'll take the first service provider and the first customer to sit and work out an you know, exhaustive contract and, and, and see what are the controls around it. And I'm sure they won't get it right the first time. But over a period of time, this will evolve. And it's, it's both of them making ground to handshake and making sure that a deal happens of that kind. Technically, I think we have all the, uh, the ingredients that are needed to make that happen. It's just a question of how do you approach it? You know, how much uh, responsibility does the end customer take and how much additional responsibility does the service provider take? Right, so. absolutely. Uh, Mr. Saji, now you represent Wipro and you are one of the global system integrators and you play two different roles. One is uh, driving cloud adoption internally within Wipro and moving your line of business applications and uh, Wipro as an enterprise adopting cloud and you providing cloud as a solution, as a turnkey solution to your global customers. So, uh, because you have been interacting with global customer base who are evaluating public cloud, uh, what are your views about cloud security? How, how is it influencing your customer adoption? Yeah. Yeah, so this was one interesting point which came just sometime before. What is the safety and the security aspect? Now, yeah, see, we recently had uh, last week this uh, news which is floating around where Wikipedia decided that one day they want to go off. Right. Now, yes, today it is Wikipedia. Why can't it be someone else tomorrow? Correct? You don't know what is the geopolitical scenario and all those things. So there's definitely a little bit of uh, uncertainty around this thing till we mature and come to a very kind of uh, stable state. So organizations would have to take a call based on the security constraints, the regulations and all those things and take the path, whether it's going to be a public cloud, it's going to be a private cloud, it's going to be a hybrid cloud, so it's going to evolve. So the new, new canvas of computing which we call the uh, cloud computing, so you would have a gradual evaluation, uh, progression by which they will get into a state where uh, it's going to be this, uh, the, yeah, basically the cloud adoption increases. And just one more point I wanted to add again with respect to the large cases. Mm -hmm. See, there are large cases on uh, which is uh, running out of public clouds. It may not be the entire enterprise architecture stack of an organization which is running from a cloud. We do have customers with uh, more than 10,000 mailboxes. So the entire messaging and uh, the directory services runs off a cloud. So yeah, so it's a mix of uh, and uh, mix of all these scenarios. On, on a case-to-case -case basis, would organizations have to take a call? Sure. Uh, Mr. Punish? So what, what are your views? Uh, is security the real barrier to enterprise adoption? Well, security is an issue. And uh, you know, uh, we've all seen what happened to Amazon in August and April. And uh, you know, uh, whether security is an issue just because there is a lack of certifications from third party, or there is a data recovery issue, or it is a data loss issue. Uh, security is, is, a, is a recognized issue and you know, I'll give you an analogy here. Say you have your own house, so then you are responsible for your security. So that's comparable to the on-premise application that you have. And compared to that, you move as a paying guest in you know, some locality in some house and then you ex start expecting different uh, security. So there you are responsible for your own uh, business or uh, what you call the uh, BHK unit or the home unit. But then you also expect that the security should be around, first level security should be around the community where you are living. The second level should be around the house where you are staying. And then the security of that VHK unit or that home unit where you are there so that your belongings are safe, right? So if we have all three levels of security in place, I think cloud will be a better solution. That's what you know, uh, my analogy is. But as of now, Looking at the solutions currently, I don't see that kind of security everywhere. You know. mm -hmm. There are gaps there. You brought up an excellent point. Actually, my next leading question is, is about that, you know, how shared responsibility impacts cloud. I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. But uh, Mr. Amit, as, as, a, as a leader in uh, security, Trend Micro, uh, what are your views? How do you see security, cloud, 
impacting the public cloud adoption? No, definitely. So I'm going to talk a little bit about public clouds. I really believe that uh, security is the number one issue when it comes to adoption of public clouds. Uh, but slightly deviating from what the panelists said, I think there are solutions available uh, as to how you want to handle security when you go to the public cloud. So if you are using infrastructure as a service model, and, you, and, and one, of these, one of the gentlemen here said very correctly that he hasn't seen a contract which, which he can sign. Absolutely. If you look at a typical IAS contract today, uh, you'll be amazed that the responsibility of security does not lie on them, but it lies on you. Uh, that's a pretty big statement to make, right? right? But the biggest thing that you're worried about when you go to a public cloud lies around the data that goes to the cloud. There are a lot of solutions available. So when we talk within a security industry, everyone says, hey, I can easily encrypt that data, which is out there in the public cloud, and I can keep a copy of that data. That's only one part of the problem. Uh, as a security company, we'll have to start looking at how do you ensure that there is no vendor lock-in when you sign a typical contract with an infrastructure as a service provider? I think that's a question that we all are struggling with, we all are grappling with. Uh, a, lot of our, uh, a lot of esteemed companies in the IT space, including Trend Micro, we're working on that. There are solutions available that will make that journey uh, right from a physical data center to the public cloud fairly easy. And those solutions are fairly available now, and they're getting bought over by public service providers, and they're able to do that security very well. Excellent. You know, a lot has been said about security requirements, and uh, uh, all the you know, points are valid. See, security on cloud, I have one more opinion, mm -hmm. that there is too much of hype about security. Number one. Number two, uh, cloud has to actually got to be looked at from two points of view. Are you a cloud service provider or are you a cloud consumer? Absolutely. Now, looking at this panel, let me represent a cloud consumer. Okay. So as a cloud consumer, what are your concerns? Now, from a security perspective, you're looking at an access management, an identity management, a proper uh, consistency of policies, something like ISO to 27001, or something like meeting the requirement of a security audit. Right. Okay, to put a perspective. But beyond this, on a performance level of cloud, you are actually more concerned that what are the bindings of the cloud service provider? Now, when I say this, means what are the kind of latencies which is going to be available on cloud? I think this issue is normally not debated. What are the kind of solutions? See, today when you talk of cloud, you talk of only infrastructure, software as a service, platform as a service. On application as a service, for organizations, then you'll have to categorize the organizations, L large organizations, the SMEs, and the small organizations. Right. Now, for small organizations and SMEs, it may make a lot of sense. And today, in application space, still you talk about products like Amazon, Salesforce.com, HRMS, BPM. These are the solutions. But these do not contribute as a major percentage of investment of any IT function of a large organization. The larger investments are in different areas which are not being touched. So the point on cloud, first thing is that people have, I mean, this is an awareness of cloud which is being created right now. But coming to security, you know, like some of the examples which have been given, in future all these security issues will get addressed. But are we ready for a cloud? So as a cloud service provider, some of the service providers are sitting here. My questions will be, are you ready for selling cloud? <laughs> Do you have the capabilities to sell cloud? Will you sell cloud as a software license? Will you sell cloud as a service? How will you sell cloud? Those capabilities are not built. So it is all together. And you know, security is something because there are many questions on security not answered. So we get into that area. But there are larger organizational issues on cloud which needs to be understood. That what should a cloud service provider do? What should a cloud consumer do? Because one more thing, I have uh, an opinion that cloud is the future. 
Now, if cloud is the future, these issues have to be understood appropriately and they have to be addressed. Now, these issues cannot be addressed sufficiently if application related issues are not understood. Otherwise, larger organizations will still keep talking about private cloud, whereas the future is going to be public cloud. So these are you know, bigger issues which are more thought provoking, more uh, of discussion in nature as on today, and more of uh, awareness, so that we converge towards a solution, a technology solution, as well as an organization building of cloud, which will actually give you those results. Very well said. Very well said, uh, Mr. Mukund. I think you brought up a very interesting point. It's not the customer. Is the provider ready for the cloud? Uh, do they really know what they are offering to the enterprises? Are they aligned with the enterprise needs? You know, the, uh, one more point I want to touch. Uh, what is the legal liability of a service provider? Not discussed. Right. What happens if the service provider goes out of business? This was articulated uh, no, by no. So Mr. Arangu. These are larger issues for organizations to think before you think of these cloud solutions. So, you know, once you start thinking in this, these issues are organizational in nature. Right. Very valid. And actually, that, that leads us into the second very interesting aspect of public cloud. I'm actually referring to one of the uh, early movers of the public cloud, Amazon Web Services. Uh, for example, Amazon Web Services very clearly uh, tell the customers that the cloud security is a shared responsibility. And uh, they actually take the ownership and the liability of anything below the hypervisor, which is uh, reflecting the physical security, the network security, and their data center security. But anything above the hypervisor is a customer's responsibility. And they, they actually call it as a shared responsibility. Now, uh, what do you think of a provider uh, drawing this line and very conveniently calling it as shared responsibility and handing it over to the customer to own the other side of security and responsibility. I, is, that, is that a very, uh, the, is it the right way of transferring the ownership to the customer or is that going to be one of the barriers for cloud adoption? What do you think of shared responsibility on the public cloud? Is it genuine? Okay, me? Yes, we can start okay. with you. Okay. Uh, See, contractually, any service contract, if you read whatever you have signed or you might sign, majority of the onus is on the customer. And that is where I put the first point, the legal liability. Right. There is hardly any legal liability of the service provider. Even the penalties related to those liabilities are very, very little or practically nothing. So it is all the more important for the customer to understand the risks involved in this. But to me, more than the data being available, see today you think your data is not available, your name is available, you are available on internet, everything is known about you. There is nothing which is you know, so secure and there are many other security solutions which can find out and address those security issues. So the, the first thing is, does cloud give me the solution to business, the point which I raised about cloud latency, does it address those issues? Are we ready for that? See, technically, when we say, uh, let me go to the basics. When we use the word cloud, what is cloud? Cloud is a service. It is elastic. It is an IT enabled capability. This is provided through internet technologies. Now, let's say in our country, with the kind of solutions we have, do we have those kind of services available to make it really online and with a very good response time? Because all the contracts of service providers protects them adequately. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. But while we are in the topic of uh, shared responsibility, uh, Mr. Amit, do you agree that once uh, an instance is, is running on the public cloud, can we, can we completely trust the provider to take care of the security of your instance running? Or do you need to treat it like your on-premise server, take complete ownership, accountability, and responsibility of your server, whether virtual or physical, and treat it like the same asset or a, or a resource that you're running on-premise? So from, a, from a, a security vendor perspective, from Trend Micro, 
what do you think that the public cloud customer should be doing when it comes to owning that shared responsibility? Well, I think this my personal opinion, right? Not not my my company view is that I, I don't really agree to this shared responsibility theory at all, right? If I'm a cloud service provider, I, I better be responsible for security, right? Uh, I am not in the only in the business of just making money and not getting financially hit if if it ever if something were to go wrong. I really believe that uh, if I am an infrastructure as a service provider, I would like to take complete ownership of security, right? Uh, I think in the next three to five years, one of the biggest things, and I was speaking to Punish offline saying, one of the biggest things that will happen is there will be independent security testing of the public cloud before someone decides to migrate to the public cloud. Absolutely. Now, Gartner is making that prediction in, in 2012 that by 2014, there will be independent security testing of that public cloud. So the point is that today, that, that public cloud needs to be secure. So it's, no, it's not a question of, of shared responsibility. I have to make that secure. I have to do everything possible to make sure that the customer who's trusting me with his applications and his data, I not only protect the physical layer, but I also protect the layer which is above, right? right. I must take ownership, right? And the customer must have an option to change vendors. Why should I only work with Amazon? Why should I only work with, say, Microsoft? Right? Tomorrow, if I'm not happy with Amazon, I should be able to move to Microsoft and vice versa and so on and so forth. Right? So I should not have any vendor lock-in. Right? My data should move when I want it to move, not, not depending on the infrastructure or service provider for that data. I think these are critical questions. So I would, I would believe that cloud service providers will have to address this question of responsibility and ownership before it actually goes for adoption. Sure, let me, let me represent the cloud service provider for a while and, and let me share my views around it. Uh, when I'm running an operating system, let's say Windows Server 2008 or, or Linux or a FreeBSD on the cloud, uh, there are vulnerabilities. There are patches that are released by the operating system vendor very often. Uh, don't you think I need to be aware of the patch management, monitoring, and even application level security issues like SQL injection and cross scripting attacks is it not uh, the developer and the customer's responsibility to make sure that those are baked into the stack irrespective of where they're running? In, uh, of course, the cloud service provider has to give you the confidence, but at the same time, don't you think the developer, the architect, the IT operational professional, and the organization owns uh, a piece of the security story wherever they're running? They're not the best guys to advise you. They are not the security experts who will, who will do that. That's not their core competence. Their core competence is something else. If you want answers to the questions that you've just raised, you should talk to security companies who've been in that business who can actually secure, uh, not only from the threat, who can give you those, uh, who can do that web application protection for you, who can do those deep packet inspection for you, and protect that virtual machine which is out there in the cloud. So there are technologies available. You have to just go to the right security company and get that solution, right? And they will do it for you. So, they, so we also, as a security company, have a responsibility to go to cloud service provider and say, gentlemen, don't worry, right? We are here to support your business model. Let's make sure that that virtual machine is securely protected and blah, 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 blah. And it works, it works pretty well. Absolutely. So Punish, do you have any views around shared responsibility? Yeah, absolutely. So this is music to my ears. You know, <laughs> I mean, the vendor organization taking responsibility, complete responsibility of security of your cloud. But the fact is, you know, this is a shared responsibility. It's like a marriage, it's a partnership and uh, both the partners have equal responsibility. Wherein the vendor will tell you, okay, these are the steps that they will take to prevent the, you know, the losses or any data loss or any uh, problems in the cloud, but they'll never accept the liability. You know, they'll just, the contract, somebody said in the morning that the contracts are like, take it or leave it. So in that view, the client organization also has some responsibility uh, to you know, uh, first select the vendor in that way or have a framework in place which ensures that they are on a cloud journey and that's a strategy. It's not a, you know, they're not moving applications on a dock basis, on a pilot basis, just, but they have a bigger picture wherein it's part of a framework. And for that matter, we have actually a framework, you know, uh, one of the few organizations which have a proper cloud strategy in place uh, and its name's Horse. You know, Horse not because the, it's an agile animal and the cloud is also, you know, supposed to increase the agility of IT. Uh, horse, you know, every alphabet has a meaning, like H is for homework, wherein you 
create a cloud core team in your organization borrowing resources from finance, legal, IT, you know, procurement, and other business, and then creating the, you know, the, setting the objectives. Why do I want to move to cloud? Whether it is reduction of space or freeing up space in data center, whether it is IT agility, whether it is modernization, whatever is the objective, what are the principles? And then create cloud-specific roles. I, I'm sure you know uh, there will be some cloud-specific trends that will come. And uh, cloud-specific roles can be cloud security architect, can be cloud costing analyst, because there are a lot of hidden costs when you move to cloud. So then the, that's the homework that you do. Then you become the go to O, which is organizational application analysis, wherein you find out which application is critical, where data is critical, which data cannot move out of country. You know, you do all that analysis. At the end of it, you segregate which applications should go to cloud, which should not, or what is the journey. You know, this is the first set. This is the second set. This is the third set, and so on. This step is very, very important. You know, and often organizations leave this step and you know just jump this and go to the next level, uh, which is the risk mitigation. The R for risk mitigation and uh, you know, limitation of liabilities. So here, and you find out, okay, what are the risks associated with moving to cloud when I move from this application from on-premise to, to a cloud, what are the potential risks that are there? And how do I mitigate those risks? What is the uh, liability that can come to me? How do I mitigate those? So that's, that's, that's the step in the framework. And then you move to the selection of vendors, S, which is an iterative process. Every time you move one application or other application to cloud, selection of vendors will happen that time. And uh, so, it starts with knowing your vendor. So the, like the way we have you know, KYC form for before investing in the mutual fund, but we have a, f a form of you know, know your vendor. Uh, this starts with floating an RFI, knowing about the vendor, then floating an RFP, detailed RFP, and uh, through an iterative process, you finalize the vendors. Okay, this is the short list of vendors, and then you, you know, finalize on, uh, zero in on some vendors. And then uh, comes the execution state, which is a steady state when you start monitoring the SLAs, OLAs, and yes, and there is another thing which I missed is uh, during the risk mitigation part, you create the exit policy. It's very important. You know, if what if I have to move out of this solution after three years or two years or one year, whatever. So that's the whole framework that you know, uh, is required. And maybe if we do this homework properly, I think the shared partnership will work. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Saji. So you as a global system integrator and providing uh, cloud-based solutions, uh, the equation changes when you put customer, you as a turnkey solution provider, and the public cloud provider. So what does shared responsibility mean to you? Yeah. No, I've been I'm kind of observing it. I think, um, <laughs> I think someone asked about the service provider cap also, because we have been kind of uh, right. ba the bashing the service providers. Now, yes, yeah, so we have been talking about this contract. Now, it may be a very long time since we might have looked at the license, license contract that we signed for a lot of these operating system vendors. Okay, the same for any of the database vendors. So if you look at some of the clauses there, it is very scary. Right. So I would say all these constraints will remain. So it is an engineering problem more than anything else. Now, see, as we discussed, there are solutions for security. You want uh, encryption at the file system layer, encryption at a database layer for everything you have security in terms of availability so today we struggle to build 39 uptime 49 uptime 59 uptime these are the kind of demands by which we engineer data center solution now if you look at the same thing from a cloud perspective so you could actually have a service where you have five virtual machines running in amazon and five virtual machines running in rack space and the both are running on a dr now you can talk about 89 uptime Right. So that, that is the kind of uh, solutions which is possible. So I would call all these constraints more of an engineering constraint. And if you can work around the engineering, you can actually solve the problem. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan, as, as the kernel of the cloud, now you are primarily into the, the heart and soul of cloud, which is a data center and automation. So uh, when we go to that layer, what does it mean by shared responsibility? Do you, do you see? Any uh, credibility in that term, or is it a, a spin-off? Is it a spin, a marketing spin that the public cloud service providers are talking about? What does shared, res uh, shared responsibility mean to you? Yeah, I, I think taking that, we've had different views, taking that analogy forward of somebody saying, yes, 
I would take, take it uh, as an independent home to a multi-dwelling unit. Uh, the, the service provider should be responsible for hygiene, you know, and security, hygiene security as I would call it. And security is an all-encompassing term. I think you, you know, put it you know, rightly by saying uh, if there is an SQL injection or if there is a backdoor open in the application, uh, you know, it's, it's the same risk that you carry whether you, you know, have it, you know, if you leave your main door open in your house, you know, it's, it's, it's like inviting trouble. And if you leave the main door of an apartment o open, you know, you can't blame the service provider and saying, you know, I left my main door open, but now that I'm in a multi dwelling unit, nobody should enter my apartment. So security is an all-encompassing term. Uh, there has to be lines drawn on, you know, where, who will guard what, you know. It can't be like a shared responsibility. There has to be zoning around security. I think somebody mentioned that point. So which zone is the service provider responsibility, hypervisor and below, that's a good demarcation. Uh, and hypervisor and above needs a lot of domain knowledge. Like for example, the service provider who is providing infrastructure is a specialist in providing infrastructure. He's not a specialist in you know, knowing every domain application. And he's not a specialist in custom code. And custom code, uh, and uh, anybody who works in the security you know, world will tell you, saying most of the security you know, errors are human errors or application errors and backdoors that are left you know, by, you know, you know, intentionally on the application. So addressing them would need the same efforts that you would do in your own house. Protecting the main door is, is what you do you know, for your own house and for your apartment. They're no different. But however, they can be asked of the service provider to say, now that I'm paying you, know, you for maintaining hygiene security, please tell me what is the hygiene security that I get? Will I be protected from DDoS? Will I be protected from physical infrastructure? The other thing that people assume is that you can't you know, go and visit your cloud installation. Please go visit their cloud installations. You know, please go see which data center they are located in. They need not be necessarily virtual. Please ask Amazon or Hoover saying, where is my data going to reside? Those are the, the pertinent issues rather than generalizing them as security. Know what you're getting into. Get into it with your eyes open. And make sure that you know what you're responsible for and what the service provider is owning up for. There's, there isn't going to be utopia around this where the service provider is going to stand up and say, I own up for everything and I take complete liability. That isn't going to happen ever, you know, because nobody's going to do that. You as a business, you know, enterprise business, own owner for all your customers, you know, requirements, right? You would eventually, even if you sell soap, you would say if you develop an allergy, you know, it, is, it isn't my problem. And it generally works in 90% of the cases, 10% if there's an issue or a medicine. You know, if there is a side effect, you will say there will be side effects. Right. So it, it applies to any, you know, product, any business. So you need to, you know, be cautious as an end customer. At the same time, ask the service provider have to be reasonable and understood well enough. So get into it with your eyes wide open. Understand what the zoning you know, requirements for security are. If you have extra requirements, please do ask for the service provider. And if you think they are reasonable, I think the service provider should be more than willing to accommodate. Great. Uh, Mr. Ohm, as one of the security leaders in IBM, what are your views? Uh, you actually power some of the public clouds, and you are into the same business. So, so I think there has been a good successful story on private clouds. See, internally, I have seen uh, in India especially, the security framework within internal companies have just started maturing. And you have already made IT investments over the last five years, 10 years, they've started maturing. So adoption to the cloud will happen. I have, you know, I have met so many customers, they talk about data protection, but they fairly don't know what data to protect. Okay, that is a question mark. And then when you outsource it to a cloud service provider, you need to understand at what level you're outsourcing it. said infrastructure, he will take care of the infrastructure. But the data and the application is owned by you. Okay, so if you don't define what, how the data needs to be protected, how will he protect that data? So that's the shared responsibility comes in. And even, you know, when you talk about even private clouds, uh, I have seen a big business house, you know, giving uh, virtual platforms for their group companies within, small companies within, they all want to go in for their dedicated infrastructure. I don't want to share my data with other group companies. You know, so this, the same what you have adoptions for a public crowd goes in into a private cloud also. So once you start addressing those areas, you know, the, uh, the private cloud adoption would be pretty high. Because internally how efficient you are within your departments. For example, a fairly large bank, okay, would have, you know, 20, 30 different departments 
40 diff different regional offices and all that. So everybody would have something or the other coming in. And if they are looking at a new business line, how well they are, you know, how efficient they are in using private clouds which are available within the company, are they building on that part? Then sure. we think about public clouds because we fairly have an understanding that, you know, public clouds because we use <laughs> Android applications and all those applications on you know public clouds we fairly tune into it. But what about our, are we thinking of building in you know a private cloud? I've been interacting with a lot of business houses. They have been thinking about it. But again, for them the ability to think and segregate and you know uh, achieve what could be the business benefits is not really hitting on that part. So once you stop, you know once you reach the private cloud level, then Partnering with a public cloud is fairly easy because then you would decide as uh, Mr. Amba said that you know decide what applications then go to a public cloud. How do we how do we interact and what could be the issues coming out of it? So I would suggest that we should focus on looking at private clouds more. Journey step one would be you know for a large group companies to look at private clouds and build up security as a part of their group organization. Or companies which are looking at look at infrastructure as as a cloud, and on some areas can go in for software as a service. But platform as a service, we need to understand the maturity. Part right. Of it. And actually, I have a question on that. So, so uh, quickly summarizing what we heard, this has been a fairly interesting discussion and multiple views. I think uh, the the room is divided into two. So many of you said shared responsibility is actually a credible way of looking at the holistic security picture. And some of you said shared responsibility is not acceptable because if someone is providing a service, they should own the security end to end. While that debate goes on, I have a question uh, primarily to the cloud consumers in the panel. So uh, there's a huge confusion around cloud security standards. You mentioned some of them. Uh, so I want to really understand from the CIOs in this panel who are the potential cloud consumers on what key standards do you look for? What are those critical standards which will help you make a decision towards public cloud? Um, to name a few, we have SAS 70, PCI DSS, then ISO 27001. So Mr. Mukun, let me start with you. So what do you look for uh, when you are making a decision on moving to public cloud? Which, which standard really means? See, again, I'll go to some basics. Uh, the question with the gentleman mentioned. See, today private cloud is something everybody looks forward to. And possibly the understanding of the cloud business is look for a hybrid cloud, private plus public. Right. Now, public is something, ultimately what is that you are putting in public? You are pulling, putting a salesforce.com, you are putting a BPM, you are putting an HRMS, in other words, you're putting non-critical business applications on public cloud. So till such time you start thinking of putting critical applications of business on a public cloud, this discussion will look at a very small segment of the cloud business. Now for that, the larger question is, the product companies who are working with you on core business applications, they have to understand the intricacies and security required for product specific requirements. They have to come out with specific products related to the kind of industry which they deal with. Now those are larger issues, otherwise you will address uh, infrastructure as a business is growing very fast. Somebody told me that infrastructure in cloud is growing at 50%. Platform as a business, software as a service business, they are growing, I mean they are growing almost similar to 40 to 50%. That will keep growing, base is small, so percentage don't make too much of difference right now. But the basic thing is, that when you look at these services, the bigger picture of IT investment is still untouched. True. Now let's look at this. In salesforce.com, HRMS, uh, you know, Amazon, BPM, the solutions we're looking for, what security standards you're looking for, all the standards, you know, the, the basic standards which I talked about, access, identity, ISO related, th these things should address your issues. Right. And the shared responsibility, shared responsibility is something which is a wish list of a service provider, that it should be shared, but there is no contract as the gentleman mentioned, 
which actually makes a service provider responsible. Right. So ultimately, it is with the customer. Absolutely. I want to I want to add something to it based on my experience. Uh, one of the enterprises uh, has claimed to be cloud ready, and they they said they're actually running something very critical on the cloud, and they they want it to be cloud ready. They claim to be cloud ready. When we look further into what application they really moved, they moved their CEO's blog. And he hasn't blogged for the last six months. And uh, that's the application that they successfully moved. Now, that, was, that actually made them to be cloud ready. So technically, yes, they moved one of the applications. But the other enterprise that I've been a part of has moved slightly better application, the travel booking application of cabs. They successfully managed to move it, but again, if you look at the pattern by, by which the enterprises are taking workloads and moving them to the cloud, they are fairly non-mission critical and applications that don't matter much to their workforce and to their internal customers. So as long as you say this, the major chunk is still untouched. Exactly. Uh, and that is the point you know, I'm making. Now, what, but, you know, look at even this kind of an activity. Uh, the business applications, the way they are, they will also go through some changes. There are collaboration applications, and many of them are working in different ways, which will come in future. And collaboration will have a very big requirement in, as a part of cloud. So collaboration will be there. But then again, it will come to that, I, I don't know what percentage to attach to this total business, but they are all non-critical business applications. Right. So unless you know the large product companies, without naming them, they look at productization of cloud. The intensity of this business will not be looked at with that seriousness. Uh, Mr. Punish and Nibelinda, do you want to add anything to it? Uh, so one thing what I want to add here is, that, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so um, you know uh, he said that. <coughs> I just forgot the point, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Mr. Naimalinda, can you pick up the thread? One is that, you know, contractually you can't define shared responsibility. So what's the point in talking about it? I can keep on talking about shared responsibility in a personal relationship. In a business relationship, there's nothing such as a shared responsibility. Your responsibility <laughs> ends, mine begins, everybody understands that, you reduce it to writing, and you go by it. But shared responsibility is is a Trojan horse. You know. uh, actually, it basically means nobody is responsible. We are talking about the key standards that would no, uh, help come, you. Coming to the next thing, what are key standards? See, most of the standards have been written not with the cloud in mind. They have all been written with the in-house data center service in mind. Absolutely. So to use the existing standards and to say whether we can use any one of those standards, no, that's the wrong question. Whether new standards need to involve, yes. They could use any of these standards as a base. But ultimately, a new standard will have to evolve. You cannot use these standards. But for instance, you take uh, 27,000. You're talking of you know, the HR part of 27,000. Uh, how is the employee background check? Now, is there any real way of me ensuring that Amazon or its service providers have done the right kind of background check on their employees? No, I'll take a declaration. OK, but is there any way of verifying it? No, there isn't. But, uh, so why get into an area which is not verifiable and stick to stuff huh, which are actually able to verify, implement, touch, feel? And there I agree completely that ultimately you will have to do the same thing as you would do huh, with your own in-house stuff. It's going to be no different. You use the infrastructure, use it, depend on him to take care of the perimeter security, physical security, power, etc., 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 run a good data center. The rest of it belongs to you. It's your app. It's your data. Absolutely. I, I agree with him. Uh, the way you view cloud is an extension arm of your enterprise. Now, how do you define what is your control in that cloud area? It needs to be very discussed very clearly with the service provider. And it can be incorporated. We, over the last couple of years, I have seen very good uh, you know, cases around you know, services like manage backup over the cloud. Because you don't want to, you have invested in your primary infrastructure. You don't want to invest in a backup because firstly, you don't want to justify a business case for that. And secondly, you want to improve your availability aspect of it. Okay, so you would go in, in terms of, you know, taking backup over infra on a, 
on a, a cloud infrastructure and then probably enabling your DR if you are stuck in, okay? Or probably a minimum level of infrastructure which is working for you on, on a DR. So if you are hit a DR, that becomes your primary, okay? So you don't need to worry of, you know, putting in uh, what uh, servers go and what amount of storage you size because as that would depend on the size of data and what, what uh, you know, power you require to run that application, what security level. So there are fairly cases in terms of that. Secondly, I would like to also uh, share one of you points that, uh, for example, infrastructure as a service which is growing. Uh, you asked about background check of the employees on the service provider. So it could be, you know, hitting on both the sides. So it would be, you know, a malicious insider over here, over there, what practices are there. Because we have seen attacks happening uh, on, even on, you know, cloud shared infrastructure because what data or what goes or how access is being managed is something which needs to be there. So it's a practice where, you know, both, both, <laughs> both the cu customer and the service provider's necks are on the line. Point, point of time, yeah. point of time to make one. There are certain non-negotiable items in the standards mentioned yeah. which cannot really be implemented in a cloud kind of a scenario. So you need a new set of standards. Even Whether the standards have to change. Exactly. Like I'll, I'll, That's I'll, I'll give you a fairly good example of, you know, uh, Europe has a very strong data uh, protection, protection. Uh, protocol, and US have some different standards. So both, you know, European Commission would not allow the data going out of Europe. But they have set up a standard for data exchange and, you know, have worked out. So similarly, I think globally, as we move across, data will move around the world. There has to be a standard set up for protecting critical information and managing that part. So that will be everywhere across. So to add Excellent. to that, actually the point that I was trying to mention was very similar to uh, Nirmal's point. You know, there are no standards as of now which are completely relevant to cloud as of now. And to add to that point is a very small thing is that audit from a perspective of client organization is very important here. So we need to, as a client organization, I need to be clear what I want to be there and what do I need to audit every time, you know, maybe a quarterly or a six monthly or a yearly audit we can do and find out whether what was the, the contract, whether it is, you know, met here or not. So what are the risks that we had earlier, whether these are being mitigated here or not. So standards, yes, they are there, but since they are not completely relevant, we have to add our own set of values there and then you know, keep on auditing. Excellent. So, so we are running out of time. Let me quickly summarize what we discussed. Uh, with a very diverse set of panelists uh, in, the, in the panel, it's very hard to arrive at consensus. And we have uh, uh, representations of both cloud service providers and cloud consumers. Uh, so we, we, we derived some very interesting observations out of this discussion. So from the security standpoint, uh, do you think the cloud is ready? And my question was primarily towards the cloud consumers. And it came back saying, uh, cloud provider, are you ready for me? It's not me being ready for you, but are you ready for taking up the workloads? Which is a very, very interesting perspective, and I think uh, that's been a very valid uh, a viewpoint of the cloud being ready for you, not you being ready for the cloud. That has been the quick summary uh, of the very first question, is the cloud ready for you? So uh, then, then we had fairly a very healthy debate around uh, the cloud shared responsibility, uh, and, and uh, the consensus moved towards, yes, it is a shared responsibility. Uh, just because you are moving on the public cloud doesn't mean you can leave your doors open and blame the cloud provider. You need to have protection at your apartment level, at your main door, and even an intrusion detection system in, in, in every hall. So the same logic applies to the public cloud. Public cloud provider gives you a certain level of security, but you are responsible for securing every layer of your application all the way up to the front end. So, so that's been the key takeaway from the discussion we had. And uh, the, the, the last question was around what security uh, standards are critical for you to look at the cloud. And the clear uh, observation has been that, uh, well, we, we still don't have those right level of standards that will make us feel comfortable because it is still an evolving space. Uh, first of all, does the cloud service providers know what exactly are the standards we are concerned about? Uh, and what are, the, what are those key things that can be standardized? So that, that's a very clear observation I made where uh, there, is a, there is a little bit of disconnect between enterprise CIOs and the cloud service providers in terms of the key standards that 
uh, both the parties can agree upon and make that move. So the bottom line is, uh, you know, every, everyone has been talking about it. Cloud is still evolving. It's, uh, it's at a very nascent stage. And I think uh, most of us are in the wait and watch mode when it comes to moving enterprise workloads to the cloud. Uh, so, so great has been a very, very insightful panel. Now I, I, I leave the floor open to the audience who can uh, ask a question to any of our esteemed panelists in the uh, We can take only two questions. So please raise your hand. Hello. I know we have beaten uh, cloud security to death here. And I definitely agree with the gentleman who said that a new standard for cloud security has to evolve rather than apply the current standards. Uh, my question is about uh, to the cloud service providers. As of today, uh, for client compliance, what would you provide in terms of evidence uh, for destruction of data if they decided to deprovision or pull out of your service? Would want to take that? So I would take that question. Uh, as, uh, the, the infrastructure as a service offering uh, gives you the, the platform where you know you have absolute control over what you do with data. Uh, the complexity, so that that isn't the challenge per se. So yeah, when you say cloud, I want to clarify that when you get a logical server, you know, as you know, in a spun off on a you know as a virtual machine for you, and you do everything on that you have the ability to delete data as well. You know, so you, you can ensure that you, know, you have control. Your administrator should do the same thing. I think there again, I, I would equate it to what you would do, with, uh, do in your home. When you ship out a faulty hard disk to your you know, uh, service provider, whoever is giving you that hard disk, do you ensure that that is wiped clean before it goes back to the service provider? Yes. I, you know, I, the, the same thing is what you need to do with infrastructure as a service. On this software as a service application, where is where the complexity comes in, you know, because you don't manage the application. It's a real multi-tenant you know, application. And uh, the, the controls that you can have around it, uh, even though you know, it, it's like not, may not be very comforting because you don't see the data being destroyed, uh, is contractual. And, these, and that's where uh, you, know, you, you need to, like what one of our panelists said, you know, is like you need to know which company you're buying the service from, they need to be a credible provider. They need to be financially stable. You can't have your you know, provider going you know, bust. So you don't know whether he you know, erased his data before we went bust or got confiscated by you know, one of the you know, people who invested money. So all of that. You know, so it's like you, know, you need to ensure that you have those controls around software as a service contractually. Uh, I, I can't see a way where you can physically see if you're buying a service off a, uh, you know, a company which is you know, off US coast somewhere. You know whether you know they actually deleted your data. That's that's a contractual risk. So I would suggest you know look out for companies that are establishing presence in India, where they can show you that your application is running off a particular data center in India, and uh, can give you you know evidences around data destruction. You know when you want it to be done, uh, that would be a good safeguard. So you know it's it's again a developing environment. It's a developing uh, you know uh, concept as to you know where your data is hosted. There will be you know regulations around. You know where you can go and put your data. So if it's non-critical data, I think the worries around uh, that data being destroyed is you know less. But if you're going to go put critical data, which is what we all want to do in the future and reduce cost of operations for IT, uh, I think we should look at it you know more from what is onshore, what is near you, and what can be controlled. So it has to be a lot more closer working relationship. With what I would stress with the service provider, you can't do business with an unknown entity somewhere off some 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 coast and then hope to you know, get the data destroyed on time. Excellent. One last question before we officially conclude the panel. Hi, I'm uh, Virender from SpyJet. Uh, my question is particular uh, pertaining to the Indian IT law, uh, which has a recent amendment wherein uh, the service provider or a platform provider in the cloud form or whatever form, hosting form, are you ready to be equally liable? Liable for what? Liable for any breach. Because as per the new IT law, uh, it happened with the eBay, uh, Bazi.com, and with all those instances. And the latest amendment makes it more stringent. 
that on any any uh, server or in uh, data is stored or secured in any form comes automatically you, you, your the responsibility is shared between the organization between the hosting service provider i don't know the fine print of this specific yes law, it's a, it's, so a, it's a very tricky question and uh, unless you, you are you're a lawyer i don't think you'll be able to answer that was a very interesting question and which is not really a legal, directly a legal question if you contract with him who's a entity registered in india who has a back to back contract with an entity registered in cayman islands who has actually a data service running out of the west coast of the us something happens now what do you do law as of today is very unclear on that because transborder laws by the very nature are unclear so i think i'll go by the advice given earlier and that is look for a cloud service provider who you can feel touch poke beat over the head what have you but something who can, you can actually physically feel then the rest of it becomes easier i think it's solved but becomes easier yeah but see adding to that from see from a from a technical perspective it doesn't make a difference if a web server it is running on a physical server or a virtual server so if a hacker from china russia penetrates into the server is able to extract that information and post it into a facebook or something like that there is no way the service provider will be able to do anything so i'm i'm still not sure what is the fine print of that okay, law i'm actually coming uh, from a couple of instances wherein the employees of an organization uh, basically when they are parting away in a bitter ways they actually sued the company that my personal data is stored with with my organization and that data is hosted onto a service provider servers so all the parties involved who have even touched that data are equally liable i think uh, that would go under your contractual agreement of you know employee when you onboard an employee okay what kind of data the employee uh, employee data you are storing with even if you are storing the b- date of birth that is a personal information so how do you see india in india how do you handle personally identifiable data standards are not laid down and they have not even if we have laid down they have not been enforced there have been no penalty structure on that part okay there has there have been cases which are pending against see i would i would say that cases have been pending cases have been put in but judgments are yet to be awaited so where the does the liability go would be decided on the judgment and what is the basis of that case but believe me today tomorrow you can sue your bank and say that you know you you have my personal data and you are uh, hosting with some uh, data center service provider and i don't know whether i am not sure whether you are storing my data properly or not now that rbi can question the banks you start questioning the banks as a consumer uh, how on the end consumer side how strong you are to control your personally identifiable data so you know these are the standards which are very vague in india yes for us we are blessed that some standard practices are coming in from world over and we are trying to implement it but the liability and who is the owner who is the owner in terms of that data and liable in case of any breach is still not clear and we have seen multiple instances in banks and any other places where customer data are transferred like if a one insurance company guy leaves and moves out to another he will carry the hot list of the customers which he is tracking go are you know anybody can it's a business risk business risk we, which we all face are, are we able to control that part right uh, so thanks thank you so much for uh, spending your time with the, the panel helping us gain insights into the cloud security and various other standards based issues so uh, i hope the audience gained a lot of insights into cloud security So uh, we officially conclude this and thank you once again for being a part of this.